morning everyone this is a new day that the lord has given to us and we will rejoice and be glad in it my name is uh, philip odio Ouma. i'm an elder at k3c and i'll be taking us through today's devotion and my devotion is a continuation of what uh, my wife uh, started yolanda and it's on the lord's prayer as we begin today's devotion uh, let's uh, pray and we are going to pray the lord's prayer our Father in heaven, hallowed be uh, your name, your kingdom come, your will uh, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from uh, the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we start uh, today's devotion, my focus will be on uh, the coming uh, of God's kingdom and his will being done in our lives. When the Israelites um, were in Egypt, they went through a lot of trials and tribulations. It was a very difficult time for them uh, at that time. And then, of course, uh, as they, they kept on living in captivity, over 70 years they were living in captivity. They had expectation and they were looking for the kingdom of God to come. And in that time, the prophets had prophesied about the coming kingdom, Daniel, Ezekiah, and others. So when Jesus comes into the picture in, in the New Testament, there was still that expectation that Jesus' coming was going to be a deliverance, the deliverance from the captivity that they were in not under the, uh, the, the, uh, the Egyptians, but then now under the Roman Empire. But when Jesus came, Jesus changed that. And he said, my coming is not for the political kingdom, but my coming was for the kingdom of God in your hearts. So when we talk about let thine kingdom come, it's not a political kingdom, but it is the reign of God in our hearts. And unfortunately, up to now, the Jews still believe that there is going to be a political kingdom that is coming. What is this kingdom? It is the, the fact that God comes and reigns in our hearts. So the kingdom is to enter into his salvation. To be part of the kingdom, we have to enter into his salvation. Those who have not believed in him, those who don't know him as Lord and Savior are not partakers of the kingdom. And what, how, what are the characteristics of this kingdom? When you talk about the kingdom of God, God is the ruler. He is the ruler in the kingdom. He is the Lord of the kingdom. And this kingdom is a growing kingdom. It's growing in our hearts. It's growing in our lives. It's growing everywhere. And how is it growing? It is growing by God using you and me who have believed in him. Every time I share God's goodness, every time I share God's word with those who don't know about him and those who know about him, they acknowledge God in their lives. And they say, if it was not for God who sent you to reach out to me, to support me, I would have not been here. If it was not for God, who used you, I could not be here. We are the carriers of the kingdom of God. Are you carrying that kingdom? Are you continuing that kingdom? The Bible in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 33, says, But ye seek ye first the kingdom of, of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As we start this new day, which kingdom are you in? Which kingdom are you seeking? We are going through difficult times as a nation and as a world. There's so many things going on through the pandemic. People are losing their jobs. People are so stressed back and forth. People are sick. There's so much anxiety that is going on in the country and not just in Kenya but worldwide. Everyone is scared. But what is God telling us? God is telling us, seek ye my kingdom, seek ye my name, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
Are you scared today? Are you worried today? Have you lost your job today? Have you lost your business today? God is saying, Seek ye my kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto you. The second point in this kingdom, when you are partaker of the kingdom of God, Matthew 16 verse 19 says, it's about power. It says, whatever you bind on, uh, uh, on, uh, in, on earth shall be bound in heaven. The kingdom, when you are part of the kingdom, you then be, begin to have, you, are, you walk in power and authority of the Lord of the kingdom who is uh, our God and Jesus Christ. Are you, do you feel you have that authority and power? It's been given to you. It's upon you to be able to exercise it. As you start your day today, will you be able to walk in that power? Will you be able to walk in that authority that God has given you because you are part of the kingdom? You are in his reign and he's given you authority. He has given you power to be able to partake in his, his, in his kingdom. Are you exercising it today as you start your new day? The last part of, 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 of the devotion is, why are, we, why are we saying God's kingdom should come? Why are we saying your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? Well, you know, human beings are very difficult people. We are very selfish people. We are bound and prone to be able to perpetuate our own kingdoms. We've talked about, we've had people talking about dynasties. I'm sure everyone understands the political situation. We've had people talking about the hustler nations establishing their own kingdoms. We've had many people uh, talking about COVID millionaires. Everyone is trying to find how they can establish themselves on this earth to have their own kingdom with money, with wealth, with fame, with power, which are all passing. That's why God's kingdom has to come and reign in us. Because if God's kingdom is not in us, if it's not in our lives, then definitely we are going to go astray. We are greedy. We are selfish beings. We do things that destroy other people. We can do things that can destroy us. And that's why we are saying, God, come and save us. Because without your power, we destroy ourselves. So that's why we ask for his kingdom to come. Are you going to ask him to establish his kingdom and his reign in your life this morning? Are you going to ask him to come and establish his reign in your heart this morning? Are you going to come? Are you going to ask him to come and establish his reign in your business this morning? Are you going to ask him to come and establish his reign in your family this morning? Are you going to ask him to come and establish his reign in everything that you do this morning? And my final point is, it says, your will be done. And this is the most difficult part in this prayer. Because like I said, human beings are selfish. Every time we want our will to be done. As Christians too, and those who don't believe in God, because we think we know what is best for us. And because of our carnal mind, we look for those things that are beneficial for me, me, what is in it for me? The selfishness of the human heart. I want the best for me. That's why we go ahead. The corruption is continuing because everyone is seeing how can I, how can I benefit uh, from this money that is around? How can I benefit from corruption? How can I benefit? Everyone is doing it. Look at how successful they are and they are flaunting it around. How can I also join and benefit like them? I want for myself. And we don't ask, what is God's will in this? What is God saying in this? And I must say, this is something that my wife constantly reminds me when we make decisions, 
we ask. And she reminds me sometimes, have you asked God? What do you think God is saying on that decision that you're going to make? Your will be done. When we say your will be done, we acknowledge God's lordship. We acknowledge that he is the king in our lives. Okay? It is a submission. We submit ourselves to him. It is not a resignation. We don't resign and we say, I can't do it. It is submission. It is a humble submission to God to ask him, come and reign over us. Why do we invite him to come and reign over us? Because he says, before you were born, I know you. I knew you. He knows us. He is our father, Abba Father. The father knows what is best for his children. The father knows the future. The father knows what is best for the child. That's why we ask him to come and uh, let his will be done in our lives. Because his will is a perfect will. His will is good for us. He knows what is good for us. As we finish, I would like to read the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Okay? As we finish, I would like to read the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. And it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to this. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. As you start a new day today, can you be able to offer yourself? When you offer yourself, like the Bible says, and refuse to conform to the patterns of the world, and refuse to conform to the kingdoms of this world, and refuse to conform to the thoughts of this world, then you'll be able to know God's will in your life. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So that as you begin your day, begin your day asking, God, what's your will for me this day? As a country, we need to ask yourself, ourselves, God, what is your will for us as Kenya? What is your will for me as, as a family? What is your will for me as an individual? What is your will for me in my workplace? What is your will for me as I start this day? And like the Bible says, his will is good, is perfect, and is pleasing. I, I, I will also like to read, just for us to understand in being in with his will, I would like to read uh, the book of 1 John, uh, chapter 5, verse uh, 14. Uh, to 15 and here it goes John chapter 5 uh, verse 14 uh, to 15 uh, and it says mm, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask if we ask according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have asked uh, of him. So what he's saying here is, John is reminding us, when we walk in his will, okay, when you talk about his will being done, when we walk in his will, there are those things that we ask. And if we ask them according to his will, not according to my will, according to his will, he is going to hear us. I have, there's a time uh, that my wife and I and our kids, we were doing our family devotion. 
and the devotion was on the will of God. And it's very interesting because when we were praying, I asked our children what they would like to be prayed for. And all of them, all of us, including me, when we were making our prayer requests, we noticed the prayer request was more about me. What I want, I want, I want a new something, I want this, I want that. So I took that and, and, and I reminded them that do you notice that all our requests were not so much what God wants of us, but what we want for ourselves. Have you found yourself sometimes may be facing the same challenge? You ask God of the things that you want. And at the same time, we discussed with the kids. Most of the times, we try to bend God's will to get what we want. Or we look at it this way. We know we have plans that we have made. And what we do is we have made the plans, everything ready. And then what do we do? We ask God to endorse or to bless our plans. We did not ask him from the word go, God, what do you want for me this morning as I start my day? What's your plans for me? As I start my day, what is it that you want me to do this morning? We don't listen to him or listen to the spirit, what the spirit is telling us. Our mind is full of the things that we want to do. The deals that we want to make for this day, the business ideas that we want to implement, the many things that we want to do. God comes in later to endorse the things that we have planned. We don't ask him before we start. So this is reminding us, let your will be done. Like I say, like I've said, this is one of the most difficult things for us to do. But as a Christian, it shows completely handing over your life to God. And then when you hand over that life to him, he is going to do amazing things with your life. And you will be surprised because his will is not to harm you. His will is pleasing and his will is perfect. As you start your day this morning, have you asked him, Lord, what do you want me to do this morning? What do you have for me this morning? Who do you want me to reach out to this morning? Is there someone you want me to extend your kingdom to this morning? If you ask him, I'm sure the Holy Spirit will speak to you in that still, small voice. Somebody is waiting for you to extend that kingdom to them. May God bless you as you reach out to that person. May God bless you as you extend his kingdom here on earth. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as we begin today, Lord, I pray that your kingdom will come in our hearts, in our families, in our businesses, Lord. The businesses that are suffering, the families that are suffering, the families that are torn by strife and war and whatever is going on. Lord, I pray that your reign and your presence will come in those families. And Lord, I pray also for us as a nation that you will use, Lord, us to be able, use your Christians, use your people, Lord, those pastors and everyone, use us, Lord, to show direction, the right direction for this country, Lord. Use us, Lord, to be carriers of your kingdom where we are, Lord, showing people your goodness and your love and your righteousness this morning. I want to thank you, Lord, for today's devotion. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Lord, as we start this new morning, new day, Lord, Lord, I just want to pray that you will teach us 
to be obedient to your words. You will teach us, Lord, to learn to walk in your will. Lord, for me as a person, for my family, and for the listeners who are listening today, Lord, I pray, Father, that will you help them to walk in your will, Lord, the plans they have. And Lord, those who are suffering at the moment, those who are feeling hopeless, Lord, those who have lost their jobs, those who are sick this morning, those who have lost their loved one, those who are in the hospital beds wondering, what am I doing here? Lord, let your will be in their lives, Lord. Your pleasing and perfect will, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as a nation, you will help us to come together in unity, in unity, Lord, to seek your face and your will and your direction for this country. Lord, I pray, I pray for the political class, Lord, that you will work in their hearts, that they will lead this nation to the direction that you want us to take as a country. Lord, I pray for the churches that, Lord, they will give direction in this country, Lord. I pray for everyone who is listening to me this morning. May your will be done in their lives. For I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen.